150 years, Elmhurst College prepared students for lives of meaning and success. Today, as Elmhurst University, we're carrying on that proud legacy. A beautiful campus just 30 minutes from downtown Chicago. Small classes where you'll get to know your professors. And top-ranked majors and graduate programs that will open the door to the career of your dreams. As we celebrate a new name for our institution in an ever-changing world, our values and spirit remain the same. Welcome to Elmhurst University. everybody and welcome inside R.A. Fagano Hall here on the beautiful campus of Elmhurst University. It's men's basketball action here in the CCIW. The visitors from North Park, the Vikings in town to take on your Elmhurst University Blue Jays. I'm Bill Downing, joined by my director producer Dennis Bergen here on Suncom.tv and Elmhurst University's Athletics YouTube page. Getting ready to go. This is the second time around for these two teams. Last time they met was back on the 2nd of December. And the Blue Jays won a close one, 74-69. Blue Jays on a one-game losing streak after dropping a heartbreaker up in Carthage. And today they'll return, hopefully back to their winning ways as they take on the... Vikings of North Park. Taking a look at the starting lineups. We'll go right with the PA announcer here today, Ocean Johnson for the Blue Jays. John Itunis, senior out of Vernon Hills, Illinois. Ocean Johnson out of Schiller Park. Jonathan Zapinski, who has had a monster season. 6'6", graduate out of South Lake, Texas. Tegan Pearson, number 21, the 6'3", senior out of Westchester, Illinois. And number 24, Quinn Pemberton, the graduate out of Lake Forest, Illinois. 16-4 and four is their overall record, 8-3 and three in the CCIW. Right now, they find themselves sitting in third place, trailing Carthage and Illinois Wesleyan. And right on the tails of the Blue Jays, North Park, who was the preseason number one, and their struggles through the season early on. It was a mighty uphill battle for the Vikings. They're now five and six in the CCIW, 10 and 10 overall at the 500 mark. 
Shamar Pumphrey, Preston Bax, Colden Van Landingham, Lance Nelson, and Keaton Lay, your starters for North Park in their black trimmed in blue, Blue Jays in their whites. And trimmed in a light blue. Blue Jays will be going left to right to start it off. Sapinski tips it off, and Pemberton will get it. And the opening tip goes to the Blue Jays. Shamar Pumphrey played at Aurora University. Had a chance to watch him before. He is an absolute star. Here's I Tunis, who struggled mightily up in Carthage, and he knows that. And so did the coaching staff on their post-game interview. Here, look to turn back to their winning ways. Three on the shot clock. Pemberton, how about that? An opening three to get things going. Quinn Pemberton, the 6-1 graduate, as I mentioned, out of Lake Forest, Illinois, gets the scoring started. And the Blue Jays up three to nothing. 19-15 left. And here's a steal. Here's Pearson. Pearson for the Blue Jays outnumbered. I Tunis. He's going to go between a couple players. Going to kick it out. Pemberton moves it back in. Sapinski, here's Ocean Johnson in the corner. I Tunis back over to Pemberton where he drained that three. Here's Sapinski, left of the lane. One on one with Lay. Pemberton, wide open three. Why not? He's got all six, both of them from downtown. Six nothing Blue Jays. Clean stroke there by Pemberton. And the lead is six. North Park, very fast team. There's Pumphrey, a long three from the corner. Van Landingham, no good. And Zapinski will come down with the board. Give the assist to Ocean Johnson. Here's I Tunis. He's going to try to go one-on-one. -on -one. He'll kick it back out to Zapinski. Back to I Tunis. He's going to try a long three. Misses that one off the back of the iron. Zapinski blocked out. Nicely there by Kenton Lay, the 6'3 senior from Lake Stevens, Washington. Here's Pumphrey. Screen set by Lay. Pumphrey kicks it back out to Lay. He's going to try a three from the far wing. No good. Pumphrey gets the board and a fresh 20 for the Vikings. So Pumphrey, he'll try a three from the opposite wing. No good. Ocean Johnson with the board. Six nothing Blue Jays. High Tunis can't get to it. There's a turnover. Lance Nelson. Quick move and landing him. Got to be careful. This guy is fast. The 6'1 junior from Richmond, Indiana. They'll kick it back out to Pumphrey. Now in the near corner. 1-1 one -one with Itunis underneath the basket. Kicks it out. That was Nelson. Here's Pumphrey. Shot off the glass. Count it. And one. Well, a quick 6 to nothing start. Could be cut in a half with a free throw here by Shamar Pumphrey, the six-foot senior out of Chicago. Lynn Bloom High School also played at Aurora University for the Spartans in the NAC. Pemberton with all six, and Pumphrey drains it. Cuts the lead in half. Now 6-3 Blue Jays. Blue Jays, the heavy road warriors from here on out. They'll have one more home game against Wheaton on the 10th. They'll be at North Central this Saturday at Illinois Wesleyan. Home against Wheaton. There's a turnaround shot. How about Pemberton with all eight? And then final regular season game at Carroll. How about Ocean Johnson? Sapinski comes down with it. Zapinski back to Pemberton, long pass. Here's Ocean Johnson, finds Zapinski. Zapinski free throw line, picked up by Lay, kicks it out, here's Nytunis, gonna split the defenders. He tries to go off the glass, but he'll be fouled. Nytunis, I tell you, he splits the defenders better than anybody I've ever seen. Blue Jays. Shooting 74% from the free throw line this season. I Tunis, 79%, almost automatic. He makes the first. And now he joins Pemberton, who has eight. I Tunis now with a second free throw. Looking to go into double digits, and the lead is now seven. 10 to three. 
16-40 left here in the first. Pumphrey. Screen set by Lay. Lay will get it far wing. He's going to move it in toward the glass. Wraps the arm around Zapinski, and Itunis saw that. Here's Pemberton. Pemberton, Itunis, finds Olsen Johnson. Underneath, going for the jam, and he's going to be fouled. Ocean Johnson reached his 1,000th point on the road. I believe that was against Milliken this year and was awarded the 1,000 point basketball here. Nice to see Ocean Johnson, 6'3 senior from Schiller Park. Layden High School, also played at Loris. Here's his first free throw, is good. Nelson will check out T.J. Gardner, the junior out of Chicago. Ken Wood also played at Murray State down in Tennessee. Ocean Johnson makes one of two. It's 11 to three, 16, 15 left here in the first. Here's Lay, really in no man's land, has to get rid of the ball and does. Finds Preston backs the third. Here's Gardner. He's going to try a three. That's no good. Zapinski with the board. Lay draped all over. And here's I Tunis. I Tunis. He's going to go coast to coast and use the glass nicely. I Tunis and a timeout called by head coach Sean Smith. Well, I Tunis, I tell you, like I said, he doesn't do it any. I've not seen anybody that does it any better than he does when it comes to defenders and splitting them and using that glass. He is really a consummate professional. Well, we're at our first timeout here in the CCIW Tilt. Fans, today's matchup is streaming live on Elmhurst University's Athletics YouTube page and will be available for rewatch following the conclusion of today's contest. Elmhurst University's athletic streams are provided by Suncom.tv. My director, producer, Dennis Bergen, sitting to my right. Is we usually talk about our eating habits, and I'm going to go ahead and touch on it. How about some Powerade and some popcorn? Yum yum for your tum tum, I say. Can't we? <laughs> hey, if you can't beat it, you might as well eat it. That's how I look at it, and that's what we're having tonight for dinner here at our beautiful perch here at RA Fagano Hall. Vikings trying to get something going. Pumphrey, there's a long three from the corner. That was way off balance. Van Landingham somehow connects with a Blue Jay right in his face. 13-6, 15-20 left to go in the first. Here's I Tunis. I mentioned he struggled at Carthage. But here tonight, he's got four points. Pemberton, cross-court pass. Finds Pearson, tries a three. How about that one? Blue Jays now three of four from beyond the arc. Almost stepping out was Lay. Tipped up by Zapinski. Here's Ocean Johnson. High Tunis back over to Pemberton. Pemberton with eight. And he's going to be fouled away from the ball. With 22 seconds still on the shot clock. All right, Pearson, I tell you, when he gets going, you might as well forget it. And this team shooting the best three-point percentage they have in the last couple games at 75% on the season, they are shooting just 35%. So you see the big difference. Trying to get their confidence back. Here's Pemberton. Sees the inbound from Itunis. Itunis now here on the near wing. One-on-one -on -one with Pumphrey. Itunis going to go baseline right of the block. Pearson just hit that three. Got to find somebody. Zapinski shot up. No good. Rolls around. Ocean Johnson couldn't get to it. Lay does for the Vikings. Here's Pumphrey. One on one. Tries to go around Pemberton. Pemberton pins him along the baseline. And there will be a turnover. Fifth turnover already for the visitors from North Park. Philip Holmes Jr., the 6'9 junior from Chicago. Played at Simeon Career Academy. You talk about some... Superstars that have come out of Simeon and King High School. The, just the Chicago Public League. I, I can't tell you enough. I did a special on them when I was in a broadcasting school. And, and I, you talk about the history and the great players that have come out of the Chicago Public League. 
list continues to grow year after year. Shot clock at 29. Pearson will inbound. Finds Pemberton, trapped in there by Pumphrey. Pemberton's got to get that ball over. He does by one second. Here's Sapinski, top of the key between the rings. Move it over to the far side. Sapinski was trying to find Pemberton, but Holmes knew exactly what was going to happen. Here's Sapinski underneath the basket. Tries to go up, no foul on Phil Holmes, Jr. Here comes North Park. Pumphrey gives it up to Van Landingham, who has a long three. And looks like he may have taken an inadvertent finger in the eye, and he's struggling just to open his eye. So now he's going to roll around the baseline. Here's Pumphrey. Pumphrey, good. You can still see Van Landing having, having some troubles right there. An inadvertent finger in the eye or the nose area. 16-8 is the score. Here's Zipinski left of the lane. 13-13 left. He's going to move into the paint. Kicks it out. Olsen Johnson near elbow. Count it. He's got three points. 18-8 back to a 10-point lead, which is the largest lead of the night. By either team, Pumphrey again goes for it. That one off the back of the iron. Pearson with the board. Here come the Blue Jays. Pearson will stop just shy of the near elbow. Ocean Johnson, quick move, finds Pemberton. Now I, Tunis. Pemberton in the corner for three. Why not? Four of five as a team, and Pemberton now with 11. He is three for three from beyond the arc tonight. Here's Pumphrey along the baseline. Oh, and it looks like was that it wasn't maybe I Tunis as Pumphrey released. No, that was Pemberton released the pass. Pemberton went down or Pumphrey went down hard. He's back up. Mitchell. Malachi and Wallach in for Elmhurst. Out there with Itunis and Ocean Johnson. Pumphrey right off the back of Mitchell. You don't see that very often, but when it does happen, it works nine times out of ten. And Pumphrey took the advantage of the defender with his back to him. Here's Wallach. Back over to Mitchell. Malachi give and go with Mitchell. Far wing. Here's Ocean Johnson. I Tunis crossover dribble kicks it over in the corner. That's a three. Ocean Johnson starting to light it up. He's got six. Five of six from beyond the arc for the Blue Jays to start this contest, and it's 24-10. Biggest lead of the night at 14. Here's Pumphrey. Near side, Julian Gatewood. Here's Pumphrey, another step back jumper. He is good. He's got nine. Talked about it right before the game starts. He will be their key player for sure. Ocean Johnson with another three. Ocean Johnson says not so fast. He's got nine. Here's a steal by Mitchell. Shot up no good. Oh, Blue Jays on fire from beyond the arc, and Mitchell will get the... Cheap foul there. Tried to poke it from behind. It's only the third team foul. First on Kyron Mitchell, 6'3", graduate out of Reading, Pennsylvania. Dominic Trellenberg, the 6'5", sophomore from Westchester, Nazareth Academy, checks in for Elmhurst. Wallach almost got to it. Van Landingham, another hard angle shot, no good. Trellenberg, oh, no call on that one. Here's Ocean Johnson. Wallach, good, count it, and one. Matt Wallach, the junior from Arlington Heights, Illinois. Well, I tell you, Trellenberg, that was dangerous. But Ocean Johnson saw it, and Wallach did the rest with the and one coming up. 29-12. 10.55 left here in the first. 
Gardner checks in for the Vikings. Kyron Gardner, 6'2", junior from Oak Park. Went to OPRF, Oak Park River Forest, then Morton College. One of my arch nemesis when I was in high school was Oak Park River Forest. We always had some good football between Downers North and Oak Park River Forest. 30 to 12. All Blue Jays here so far. Here's Gardner again. Pumphrey, first quick move. Mitchell, and again, he's got 11. Pumphrey, now five of seven from the field. Joins Pemberton in double digits for the Blue Jays and for the top score so far tonight. Here's Wallach. Ocean Johnson, another long three. Count it, he is on fire. He's got 12, seven of eight from beyond the arc tonight for the Blue Jays to start it, 33-14. Halfway through the first. Here's Nelson, Pumphrey in the corner, picked up by Trellenberg. He's gonna block off the baseline. Pumphrey, I tell you, he stops quicker than anybody I've seen. Here's a long three, that's no good by Gardner. Here comes Trellenberg. And he will be fouled. Looks like, are they going to say on the way up? One official said he was going up, so it looks like he will be shooting free throws. First on Van Landingham. Trellenberg looking for his first points of the night. Ocean Johnson out of nowhere with 12. Pemberton with 11. First one is good. Devontae Robinson will check in, the 6'2 junior from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, for North Park. Ocean Johnson, 12 points, 4 of 4 from the field, 3 of 3 from beyond the arc. Pemberton, 11 points, 4 of 4 from the field, 3 of 3 from beyond the arc. 35 14, 9 35 left here in the first. Don't forget to check us out. On X, Instagram, and Facebook, Nelson gives the ball off of Gardner, and I believe it's going to go off of his leg. And it'll be another turnover. That's number seven for the Vikings. Allenberg gets it into Mitchell, picked up by. Lance Nelson, the sophomore to Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. Here's Malachi. Wallach, top of the key. Ocean Johnson, he's gonna try another three. That one looked off from here, and it was. E.J. Wallace with the board, the freshman from Hoffman Estates for the Vikings. Golden Van Landingham, junior out of Richmond, Indiana, will go to the line. Jellenberg with his first, team's fourth. 9.06 left here in the first. Nelson will inbound baseline with 25 on the shot clock. Gets it out to the very tall DJ Wallace. 6'8", he's a freshman. And just as I mentioned his name, off his fingertips for the eighth turnover. And it will be Blue Jays ball. Ocean Johnson will catch a breather. John Itunis will check back in. First rotation of starters, bench players. Looks like it might be completed as Itunis found his way back in. Here's Itunis. Wallach in the paint, kicks it out Itunis. Itunis splits the defenders, floater up in, and that's going to be no good, but he'll be fouled. Gardner's with his first, team sixth. I Tunis will go to the line. As I mentioned, 79% free throw shooter on the season. And makes the first. Sapinski will check in. Cole Hornbuckle, senior from Fishers, Indiana, will also check in for Elmhurst.
Nye Tunis with his second and makes it easily. 37-14. Nye Tunis, five points. Here's Pumphrey. Robinson, top of the key, moves it near side. Almost lost by Van Landingham. He'll try a long three. That one hit nothing. Hit Hornbuckle's hands, and here's Wallach. Wallach, shot up no good off the front of the rim, but boarded down by Van Landingham. Here comes North Park. Van Landingham, Nelson shot up, count it, and one. Well, good defense. Here's Nelson. John Sapinski off of his feet, and that's where the foul comes in. And that's the fifth as a team. First for Zapinski. 6'6 graduate of South Lake, Texas. Lance Nelson makes the end one. Down to a 20 point lead, 37 17. Here's I Tunis. I Tunis. Looked like he wanted to try to go all the way. Hornbuckle. Now Wallach. Screen set by Zapinski. Swings it over I Tunis. Far wing. In and out. That was halfway down. Trellenberg comes up with it. I Tunis. Finds Zapinski. Oh, no good. Second chance is good. Jonathan Zapinski. Missed the first, fouled up his shot, dropped it in a second time. 39-17, 7.25 left here in the first. Gatewood finds Pumphrey. Pumphrey out there with Julian Gatewood. Pumphrey, free throw line, shot too strong. Trellenberg with the board for Elmhurst. Here's Hornbuckle, nice bounce pass to Wallet. Nice spin move along the baseline, shot up, counted, and one. He is on fire. He's got five, going for the end one. Good crisp passing. How about that bounce pass there by Hornbuckle? And Wallach right now playing with some huge inspiration. Wallach from Arlington Heights, Illinois. Prospect High School also played at IMG Academy in Florida. If anybody knows anything about sports, those guys put almost everybody in the pros at an IMG Academy. So Wallach makes the end one. Here's Gardner. Nowhere to go. Good stop there by Hornbuckle on the baseline. Nowhere for backs the third to go. Just inside three point, that's no good. One and done for the Vikings, Trellenberg with the board. Here's I Tunis. Bounce pass, Wallach in the paint, loses it. Falls down, here comes North Park. Long three by Gatewood is good. Julian Gatewood, the junior from Homewood, Illinois, played at Homewood Flossmoor. Goes from one Viking to another Viking. Here's I Tunis. Hornbuckle, long three from the near, count it. Thought the bank was closed, but it's still open. It's 45 to 20, 6-10 left to go as Hornbuckle joins the three-point club. Quick move by Pumphrey, long on the baseline, kicks it out. Looked like Preston backs the third one of the three. But he thought second about it. Here's Gardner, shot up, counted, and one. Vikings doing it and getting fouled. Oh, that TJ Gardner quick. Six foot junior. They go to the line for a chance for the end one. 45-22, 5-51. Left here in the first. Nice crowd here tonight on a Wednesday night. Here on the beautiful campus of Elmhurst University. And makes it. Sixty-nine percent free throw shooting team are the Vikings. Don't miss many. Here's I Tunis, 45-23. Pemberton. Trellenberg back in the corner. 
He's going to come out and he'll receive the pass. Pemberton, long three. No good and boarded down by Gatewood. Here comes North Park. Gatewood, step back three, is good. Look out once he gets going, this team can go places. A very tight first game when they met back on the second. 74-69 was the final. There's a three by Trellenberg. He will join the three-point club. Eight of 12, shooting 67% from beyond the arc. 5, 26, 4, 50 left. Pumphrey double teamed along the baseline, kicks it out, Gardner. Gardner, here's Lay. He was going to try a three. Comes in on Zapinski, wild shot, no good. Zapinski with the board. Here's I. Tunis, Elmhurst in transition. Oh, I. Tunis, he's going to get fouled by Lay. I tell you, when you're going down like that and you still have the whereabouts to go ahead and throw up a shot, you never know if it will go down. Eighth team foul. Second on Kenton Lay. High Tunis with six. He's perfect from the free throw line, 4 4. Trellenberg will catch a breather. Now the original starters in for the Blue Jays. Good substitutions there by head coach John Baines. Hi Tunis makes the first. After losing 80 to 72 on Saturday, right before that game, maybe maybe it was the fact that the women's team went to three overtimes to beat the Firebirds. What an impressive game that was. Good friend of mine, Pete Ferrari, making the call. Nice pass inside, not able to put it down was Phil Holmes. Second opportunity, making the third. Zapinski says that's enough. Here's Pemberton. And the women's team went to three overtimes. That was a marathon. Here's Pearson. He's going to try a three. Why not? Missed that one. T.J. Gardner with the board. Looking to go coast to coast. Thought about it. Kick it up back out. Here's Pumphrey. He's got 11. Pumphrey. And he is fast. He'll turn around on Itunis. My, oh my. He's got 13 already. Here's Itunis. 340 left here in the first. 50 to 28. Sapinski, bounce pass. Pemberton. Shot up, no good. He was backing down Preston Bax the third. Off the front of the rim. Now North Park. Gatewood gives it off to Pumphrey. Pumphrey, stop and drop. How about that step back? Misses it. High Tunis, Pemberton, here's Ocean Johnson. Ocean Johnson fouled on the way to the basket, and I believe it's going to be Phil Holmes Jr. with the foul. First foul for Gatewood. Ocean Johnson will go to the line. He's got 12. He's one of two from the free throw line. Blue Jays shooting 11 of 12. Makes the first. Malachi will come in for Zapinski. Give him a much needed breather. Multiple double doubles on the season for Zapinski. CCIW Player of the Week. All the accolades. Here's Gardner. And landing him. Back to Gardner. He's going to try to go one on two with Ocean Johnson and Malachi. That basket, no good. And here's Pemberton. Pemberton finds Malachi. Pemberton with 11 points. He started off with three threes to get things going. Here's Pemberton. Pemberton kicks it out. Malachi. Malachi, no good. Too strong. And Gardner with the board. 
Here's Pumphrey, 222 left here in the first. Pumphrey, nice pass down low, Malachi. Good defense on the shot by Phil Holmes Jr. 52, 28, 210 left. Here's a long three, Ocean Johnson. That one no good off the back of the iron. Vikings now starting to really implement the blocking out on the shots. Blue Jays one and done. Here's Gardner. Pumphrey, first quick step move. And that's going to be a travel. Nelson back into the contest for the Vikings. Eighth turnover for the Vikings, only two for the Blue Jays. We're under two minutes left here in the first. All right, Tunis, Malachi with the big screen right at the midcourt strike. Here's Pemberton, 15 on the shot clock. Pemberton left of the lane, shot up, good. Pemberton now with 13. Buck 30 left. Here's Gatewood. Oh, almost lost it. Ocean Johnson would have been off to the races. Gatewood step back three, and he drains it. Gatewood now with nine, and he's three for three from beyond the arc. Here's Pearson. 110 on the game clock, 19 on the shot clock. DJ Wallace getting ready to check back in for the Vikings. Malachi between the rings. Finds I Tunis. Bounces in. Ocean Johnson, seven on the shot clock. Near elbow, Itunis, now between the rings. Step back three, good. He's got 11. Itunis, ice in his veins. Redemption game here tonight for Itunis. Twenty on the shot clock, 34 on the game clock. Rebound Roots. Here's Nelson. Goes between Itunis. Itunis with the foul on Nelson. Itunis with 11. Good call there by the officials. Blue Jays 13 of 14 from the free throw line, 10 of 16 from beyond the arc. Nelson to the free throw line for two. He's got three points tonight. And misses the first. For that shot, he was perfect. One of one, now one of two. Sapinski in, and Malachi out. 57-31, 24.1. Left here in the first half. And Nelson makes one of two. DJ Gardner checking back in, and Nelson will get a re breather. That well, looks like we're all going to get a 30-second breather. Elmhurst University Athletics would like to thank our scoreboard sponsor, Elmhurst Bank, a Wintrust Community Bank. For more than 25 years, Wintrust Community Banks have invested in, given back to, and gotten to know the communities and the people living in them. When you bank with the Wintrust Community Bank, you can be confident money is staying local and going back into the things that matter most to you. That's Elmhurst Bank. 57-32 dodging t-shirts. Throwing t-shirts and now I'm not sure. They're throwing everything into the crowd up here. Not for sure I was going to get absolutely smoked by one of them mini softballs. 24.1 seconds left. 57-32. Blue Jays shooting 57% from the field. 63% from beyond the arc, and 93% from the free throw line. Those are some winning numbers right there. Vikings, 41% from the field, 40 from beyond the arc, and 80 from the free throw line. Shot clock off, full court press set up by the Vikings. Here's Ocean Johnson, He's falling out of bounds, saved it. Pemberton with it. As I mentioned, the shot clock is off. Eight seconds. Here's Sapinski. Sapinski, Pearson, corner for three, good. That's how you utilize the shot clock and the game clock, folks. That's a winning combination. 60 to 32, we're at halftime. Blue Jays with the lead, we're taking a break. Talk to you in a few.
For nearly 150 years, Elmhurst College prepared students for lives of meaning and success. Today, as Elmhurst University, we're carrying on that proud legacy. A beautiful campus just 30 minutes from downtown Chicago. Small classes where you'll get to know your professors. And top-ranked majors and graduate programs that will open the door to the career of your dreams. As we celebrate a new name for our institution in an ever-changing world, our values and spirit remain the same. Welcome to Elmhurst University. You just might end up making the world a better place. But first, you have to discover who you are and what you can learn from others. To do that, you have to seek out teachers and mentors who will help you identify your goals and challenge you to go after them. Before you can do that, you have to find a community that welcomes and supports you. A place where you can learn. A place where you can thrive. Before you can do that, you must have motivation and desire to improve your mind, your soul, your circumstances. To ignite that desire, you must find your potential. We'll help you discover your potential once you discover us. Elmhurst University. We know that going to college is a huge investment. You put your trust and time in Elmhurst University, and we do the same. You invest in us, and we invest in you. Your story begins as we welcome you to Elmhurst University. From your first day of orientation, our focus is getting you acclimated to college life and making you a part of the Elmhurst community. Definitely Elmhurst was the one that I fell in love with. Right when you stepped on campus, it was a nice environment. It just felt like home. The goal of first year seminar is to make the transition from high school to college as smooth as possible. It's an instantaneous way to have a niche at Elmhurst. A lot of times there's that doubt that I don't know if I can make it here. I don't know if I'm meant to be here. I feel it is our role as an institution to get those doubts out of their mind the second they are on this campus. Once you've started classes, our responsibility is to support you both personally and academically. Your faculty and your staff who are here and committed to your success are going to be walking with you on that journey, providing both the challenge and the support for you along that way. I changed my major about five times, and so I really needed someone there to help me through it, help me pick out new classes, to help me make sure that um, I graduate on time. So they support us academically, but they're also interested in our lives as a whole individual. For example, when I was applying for the Fulbright, they were more than willing and super supportive. Along with supporting you, our job is to make sure you challenge yourself in order to make the most of your experience. When the students, especially in computer science, uh, go out into related fields, they're going to be confronted with uh, adapting to new environments, new technologies, and we try to challenge them in the classroom to, uh, to adapt, to learn how to learn. I've had teachers uh, go to me and say, like, I think you'd be interested in research, so they introduced me to some professors and I've been doing research now for three semesters. It taught me a lot about myself, definitely, and about the way I adapt to different situations. I think we all learn best when we're a little bit scared, a little bit on the edge. They really believe that the things that are beyond the typical, experiencing undergraduate research, studying abroad, having a quality internship, some of those things are going to be most memorable and meaningful and really impactful for them. As your academic journey at Elmhurst comes to an end, our relationship reaches a crucial point as we launch you into the next phase of your life. Elmhurst is a liberal arts college that aims at creating educated citizens, and that's not a process that just takes four years or two years. We're invested in these students. We give our kind of heart and soul to them while they're here, and so we care if they succeed once they leave. When students go on to graduate and go on to live amazing lives and, and do things personally and professionally, their fingerprints are still all over this institution in a way that helped us to become a, a better sense of who we are and who we as an institution want to be in the world. We don't at Elmhurst tell students what to think, but we try to teach them how to engage with their own values to become better citizens of this country, of this world. And that makes me proud to be a part of the community of Elmhurst. I'm confident in our graduates because I know we've prepared them both personally and professionally. We love to see them fly the nest and flourish.
My name is Michael, I'm a senior here. I study special education and I'm a first generation college student. My name is Lauren Berryhill, I'm a junior and I'm a music education major. My name is Sarah Jean Dickey. I am a double major in mathematics and computer science with a minor in Spanish and I'm a senior. My name is Randy Morales. I'm a freshman and I'm a psychology major. I transferred to Elmhurst because I like the small class sizes and I really value that professor-student relationship that I knew that I was going to get here. When I was looking at other colleges, it just didn't feel like people cared and wanted you there the same way that when you came to Elmhurst. They just really wanted you to be there and to learn and grow and, and I felt like I would be comfortable coming here, but also be pushed in so many ways to grow and become better. I already knew some people who went here and I'd visit a couple of times just to hang out with them. I just really liked being around them and being here. And the campus itself is absolutely beautiful. My sister did go to school here as well. I kind of already knew the campus a little bit, knew it was a great school. I'm glad I chose Elmhurst because it was probably the best place for me and it was the best monetary decision as well. When I first transferred, I live in apartments. Uh, but now I live in Stanger and I really couldn't picture it any other way. Like I love being on campus. There's just something about rolling out of bed and going to class that I love. I started out in Schick my freshman year here. I moved to Niebuhr halfway through. I lived in Schick my sophomore year as well and I've been living in an on-campus house on Myrtle for the past two years and I love it there. I've actually only lived in Curitan Hall all three years. I really could stay there my fourth year and be fine. I love the community that I brought that you were one room away from your friends. You were eating dinner on campus together almost every night um, and just that there were different opportunities within the residence halls. A day in the life is pretty hectic. Most music ed majors, their classes are in the mornings and then their ensembles are in the afternoon. So I'm pretty much boom, 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 thing to thing to thing. I'm a morning person, so whether I have class in the morning or not, I like to wake up a little bit on the earlier side. So I'd wake up at 5.30, practice, eat breakfast <laughs> quickly, go to my 9 a.m. Probably have class till around noon. And depending on the day, I'll probably head out to the local middle school to take some time with my students there. Go to the library to do some homework, and then I also work at the library. Get out of class, go home, change, go directly to work. I'll usually have work later in the afternoon, um, and then eat dinner, maybe do some more homework, watch a movie. Get a dinner or some snacks at the roost, and then head back to my dorm to do some homework and uh, head to bed. Usually I spend time with my friends at night and that's when I get to catch up on what's going on. My favorite place on campus is on the third floor of the education department. It's the best place to study with the best view. I have two favorite places on campus. One is my house, but I also love uh, the conference room in Daniels. My favorite place would be the cafeteria. Sitting in Founders, I love to sit at one of those tables and do homework. You can be in there to have fun, you can be in there to study, and the vibe can be whatever you want it to be. Out of the four classes that I took this past semester, my favorite class was acting. The professor was uh, Dr. Tony Noyce. He is such a character. He's so awesome to be around. It was such a fun experience. And my favorite class was probably linear algebra with Dr. Crawford. It was part theory and part computation, which I really liked how it pulled those two concepts together. I mean, Dr. Crawford is just an amazing teacher. I've had her almost every semester since I've been here. Post-colonial theory with uh, Dr. Janice Lively, and that class had me thinking about it like all day. Music theory class, um, which is probably an interesting choice because it was at 8 a.m. every single day my freshman year, both semesters, which no one likes 8 a.m.s in college. My professor, Mr. Streeter, is incredible, and my class became more of a community than anything. It was a really nice way to come into college, and honestly, my best friends came out of that class. One of my favorite activities um, is the honors program. Um, I've been involved with it all four years that I've been on campus here. I'm also involved in Alpha Phi Omega here on campus. You do a lot of service in the community. You get to build relationships with people in the organization and you get to do a lot of leadership activities. I've been involved in lots of student groups on campus. All the choral ensembles, the vocal ensembles, and I loved being in Late Night Blues vocal jazz. We just had a lot of fun and really bonded with each other. I'm also a member of Phi Mu. It's a really fun way to like meet people but also to give back to others that need it. My favorite organizations that I've been a part of is definitely the Black Student Union because I really like what they're doing for the campus overall and the social justice issues that they're pursuing on campus. I'm pretty much just involved with uh, running. I'm really proud to be a Blue Jay because it's, it's an amazing community. Blue also looks really nice when we're running, so <laughs> it's awesome. I love being a student ambassador in the Office of Admissions. Um, it's really great because I get to give tours to all these potential students, whether they're first years or transfers. I'm a CA for the ELSA students, which basically means that I live in the dorms that they 
also live in to provide any like extra support that they might need. And I'm really proud to be part of this program, especially because it's like one of the few in the country. And it's awesome because I work with students with disabilities in like classrooms and they always ask me, oh, can I go to Elmhurst? And like I can say confidently, yes, you can go to Elmhurst. When I cross the stage at graduation, I'll be most proud of all the research that I've done. I didn't come into college with the intention to do that. I fell in love with the idea of research and the process of doing research. It's just incredible to look back and think that Elmhurst has done so much for me already and I think that's what I'll be most proud of to think just who I've become and, and who I want to be still. I think what I would remember most fondly are obviously my friends that I've made. Making memories with those friends and really interesting places that normally wouldn't be so exciting but um, they are because you love each other and you get to know each other so well. Between the professors um, and the friends that I've made, I think that that will stay with me the rest of my life. People who give back to Elmhurst, you're not only helping me, you're helping my family grow as well. Me graduating college and being the first one to graduate means that hopefully others in my family, like my nephews and nieces, can see that and want to come to a school like Elmhurst. So when you give money to Elmhurst, you're giving these students like the experience of a lifetime and the ability to become who they're meant to be. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to change our lives. Welcome back, your halftime score 60 to 32. Let's take a look at how that first half ended. Pretty much how the game started. Good rotation and nothing but net for Pearson. That's how the game started with four straight three-pointers, three by Pemberton and one by Ocean Johnson. And Pearson added to his totals up to six points. Team shooting 65% from beyond the arc. That is almost a season high, 58 from the field and 93 from the free throw line. Those are winning numbers. The Vikings, 41% from the field, 40 from beyond the arc, 80%, only shooting four or five from the free throw line. Rebounds pretty much even. Elmhurst with a one rebound lead, 16 to 15. Low offensive boards on both sides, three to two in favor of the Vikings. 14 to 12 in favor of the Blue Jays defensively. Turnovers, nine to two in favor of the Vikings. And we are ready to get underway and here we go. 60 to 32 is your score here at halftime. Here's Lay, gonna try to go one on one with Zapinski. Zapinski just enough. And Lay throws that one from behind and Pumphrey misses it. Lay. Looks like he got hit on top of the head by an elbow, but Itunas comes down with the board. First possession here in the second half. For the Blue Jays. Here's Sapinski between the rings. Picked up by Lay. Over to Pemberton. Sapinski right of the lane. 
One on one with Preston backs the third. He loses the handle. And Nelson comes down with a long outlet pass to Lay. Shot up and good. Lay, that's his first points of the night. 60 to 34. Here's Ocean Johnson. I'd like to see him touch the sky sometime tonight. We might just see that later on. Pemberton, another screen set by Zapinski. They're trying to do that pick and roll. Here's Itunis in the corner. Pearson who ended the first half with a three. Ocean Johnson in and out, no good. Pemberton with the board, floater up, no good. Two chances, Van Lanningham for the Vikings. Here's Pumphrey. Do not turn your back on Pumphrey. He'll go right around you. Here's Pumphrey, shot up and good. He's got 15 points. That kid is special. Here's I Tunis. Vikings trying to cause some turnovers here early on in the second half. I Tunis, that one hit from behind, and he'll be fouled. Baseline in with 24 on the shot clock, 18-18. Second one on Colden Van Landingham. Pemberton will switch up with I Tunis, inbounding baseline, right underneath their basket. Finds I Tunis right in front of the Blue Jay bench. One on one with Nelson. Zapinski just inside three point land. Give and go, Pemberton. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Pearson. Down to 10. Pemberton rotates it over to Ocean Johnson. 15 footer baseline, no good. Nelson with the board. Here come the Vikings. Vikings looking to turn the tables here in the second half. Here's Lay blocked by Zapinski. Shot up and good. Five, Preston backs the third. Here come the Blue Jays. I Tunis looks behind, goes up, no call, and got it back to Ocean Johnson, but he says that I Tunis stepped out of bounds. Looking for some contact with a possible foul on that last play, no call. 60 to 38. Back within 22. Largest lead was 28 by the Blue Jays. Set at 19 minutes and 21 seconds of the second. Or the second, yes it was. Here's Pumphrey. Kicks it near corner. Van Lanningham, he's trapped in. Kicks this one out. Long three, Preston backs the third, no good. And Zapinski with the board. Gets it out to Pearson. Zapinski now with six boards. Here's Ocean Johnson. One-on-one -on -one with Lay, trapped underneath the basket, kicks it out, Zapinski, five-footer good. Zapinski now with four, he's two of five from the field. 62-38, under 17 left, Nelson long three, that's good. Vikings, nope, they're gonna say only a two-point basket, his foot was on the line, here's Zapinski. Zapinski keeps it to himself, shot up and good, I don't know how he kept that one at his feet. Back-to-back -back baskets for Zapinski. He's got six, 64-40. Elmhurst with the lead. Here's Nelson. Nelson just hit that three. Here's Pumphrey, near elbow. Shot up, in and out, no good. And Pemberton with the board for the Blue Jays. Oh, crossover on Nelson. Left his shoes at the midfield marker. That one good. Well, that center court strike right there. Owned a couple pair of shoes right there. All right, Pemberton with a quick move. Here's Humphrey. Back over in the corner. Not much room. And Lanningham shot up. No good. Lay with it. And he'll score. Head coach Sean Smith in the second season wanted a foul. Did not get it. 66-42. 15-45 left to go. Pemberton almost over and back. Sapinski now with it. Between the rings, moves it over to the far wing. Ocean Johnson, just inside three-point land. That one no good, too strong. Nelson backs the third out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Nelson along three, a quick trigger. That one no good. Lay tries to keep it alive and able to do so. Lay will try a three. Low trajectory shot, no good. And this will be an offensive foul on the Vikings. 
Preston backs the third. That's going to be his second, team second. Blue Jays yet with a foul here in the second half. 15-11 left in this contest. I Tunis to Pearson. Pemberton, nice play. Pemberton now with 17. Here's Pumphrey trying to go all the way. Blocked by Pemberton. He does a little bit of everything. Here's I Tunis. Left of the lane. Up on Nelson. Oh, no good. Kicks it back out. Pearson, long three. Oh, would have counted, but he's going to shoot three. He ends up in the Blue Jay bench. And Lanningham, that's his third. And that's going to put Pearson to the line for three. Pearson with six. Starting to get a little physical out there between these two teams. As I mentioned, 74-69 was the final. Back on the 2nd of December, here it's 69-42. Pearson makes the first, here's the second. Nothing but net. Sapinski will catch a breather. Malachi back in. All three find the bottom of the basket, 71-42. Pearson will catch a breather. Mitchell back in. Shot up by Pumphrey, no good. Malachi with the board. Here's Pemberton. Blue Jays on the run. Here's Malachi. Oh, he wanted to go in for a jam, and that one blocked out of there. What a beautiful play there by Gatewood. In the corner, and it looks like Van Landingham may be fouled in the corner. I believe that he's going to go three. Well, now we've seen it both ways. Trying to get you some scores from the CCIW. Milliken at home against Illinois Wesleyan. Van Lanningham makes 71-44. Carthage at Carroll. Augustana at Wheaton. 71-45, 14-19 left. Milliken with the lead at home against Illinois Wesleyan, 31-27. I Tunis to Malachi. How about I Tunis with eyes in the back of his head? What a play, 73-45. And that one turned over. Tenth turnover. I Tunis, what a no look pass. To Jaden Malachi, 6'7 sophomore out of Clayton, Indiana. So Milliken leading. And this one will stay with the Blue Jays. Mitchell inbounds to I Tunis. Six on the shot clock, I Tunis. Finds Johnson, count it, at the buzzer. He's got 16. 75-45, Ocean Johnson. I don't think he had any clearance from the FAA on that one. He jumped almost from the free throw line, stayed up in the air and came back with the block. 
kid is special. Not many can say they've scored 1,000 points in college basketball. We have a foul away from the ball. As I mentioned the physicality really starting to pick up. No, that's going to be against the Blue Jays. Jaden Malachi, that's his first, team second. Three fouls for the Vikings. Here's Lay, one-on-one -on -one with Malachi, and there's a whistle. And we have a technical. Not sure who the technical went on. I believe it may be on the Vikings. Malachi picks up two fouls in as many seconds. Van Landingham with the technical. Said something, one of the officials. Talk about dotting the I's and crossing the T's. That one right there was a quick technical, so something really, really bad was said. Ocean Johnson misses. <laughs> Carroll leading Carthage. 69-65, all close games here tonight in the CCIW. Here's a second by Johnson, and he makes it. Johnson now with 17. Van Landingham, four fouls, one away from fouling out, so he'll catch a breather. Wallach will check in for Elmhurst. Notif taking a look at the uh, scoring table here tonight, just talking to my SID here tonight, Matt, and they got a cover over the top of it, able to actually sport some real colors along that thing. It's beautiful. And smart play that time by Julian Gatewood, throwing it off Ocean Johnson. New possession arrow. A lot of good things happening here. Elmhurst University. Devontae Robinson out of OKC. Nice play into Lay, and he'll go to the basket, and he'll get the end one. By Pumphrey, I tell you, great vision again. They used to call them point guards. Back in the days when you had the Michael Jordans and so forth, now they're power forwards. You're either a forward or you're a center. And it really doesn't matter how tall you are, to be honest with you. They're shooting from all over the place. That line drive, no good. Malachi with the board. Here's Pemberton, 76-47. 13 minutes left here in this contest. Mitchell. Malachi with the screen. He's got to be careful. He's got two quick fouls. Ocean Johnson. Here's Wallach. Ocean Johnson. Pemberton in the corner. He's going to try a three. That one no good. Wallach almost comes down with it. Pumphrey again with another board. He's got 15 points. Hands the ball off to Gardner. He'll be fouled on the way to the basket. The Blue Jays coming back on defense. Fortunately, they're a little bit out of control. Put in the Vikings to the line. And they're shooting 79% from the free throw line. Right, Tunis, Zapinski, Chellenberg getting ready to check in for Elmhurst. Malachi, Ocean Johnson. Pemberton out. 76-48, 12-36 left. It's going to come down to the wire in the CCIW. Carroll, who's been playing some great basketball as of late. That one off the hands of T.J. Gardner. If they can pull off the win tonight and the Blue Jays can win, they'll jump back in the second. Illinois Wesleyan trailing also. Wallach trying to get the ball in, finds Zapinski. Aggressive play by the Vikings, trying to cause a turnover to get back in this contest. Mitchell 
Finds Itunis between the circles. He'll move it near side, give and go with Mitchell. Now Wallach, 12 on the shot clock, 12-18 on the game clock. Here's Wallach, left of the lane, kicks it out, Trellenberg. Trellenberg, long three, no good. And Mitchell trying to come down with it, and that's going to go off of Mitchell. Devontae Robinson fighting for it for North Park. We talk about a kid that is in really good shape, Devontae Robinson. Looks like he can wrestle, play football, can do it all. Here's Pumphrey. Pinned in uh, along the baseline, Gardner. He'll move it back out, then back in. Zapinski swats that one away. Here's Itunis. That one stripped. Here's Pumphrey. Floater, no good. Gardner comes down with it, gets it back out to Robinson. Now Gardner in the corner with 14 on the shot clock. Gardner finds Wallace baseline. That shot didn't make it. Mitchell with the board. Here's I Tunis. Wallach. Now Zapinski. Mitchell, far corner, wide open three, no good. Zapinski tries to come down with it, not able to, but it goes off the hands of Devontae Robinson. Break for the Blue Jays right there. They'll get it with 20 on the shot clock, 11.09 on the game clock. It's 76-49. Itunis, wide open three. Man, just like practice. He's got 14. Talked about a redemption game. This is it right here. Itunis and the Blue Jays know every game is big. They're in the postseason. There's a long three. Made by Devontae Robinson. Long outlet pass looking for Wallach. Wallach gets it back. Trapped underneath the basket, and he is absolutely tackled by a couple Vikings. I don't know how Wallach out jumped Devontae Robinson. He's 6 2, and Wallach checking in. Well, 6 1. He wanted him more for sure. Wallach to the line. He's got six. He's perfect from the free throw line, two of two. Vikings shooting 17 of 19 from the field. Oh, excuse me, from the free throw line. 79-52. In and out, no good. Lay will check back in. So will Gardner. Iron Gardner. Well, it makes it. 80-52. Largest lead was 31. Quick move. Robinson shot up and good. Dante Robinson keeps things going. He's got five. Here's Wallach. And the Blue Jays able to bust the press. Here's Trellenberg, finds Itunis. Sapinski up high for a screen. Here's Itunis, finds Zapinski, and Zapinski drops it in. He's got eight. Oh, what a play. And Itunis with the foul. It's only his second, team sixth. But just under 10 minutes left to go. A lot of free throws coming this way. Here's Nelson. You would expect that against CCIW foes. Just a lot of contact. Hornbuckle getting ready to check back in for Elmhurst. Here's Nelson baseline for the Vikings. Robinson, another long three. That one in and out, no good. I Tunis with the board. Itunis checking in at 6-3. Here's Mitchell. Loses the handle, and he'll turn that one over. Gardner with it. Iron Gardner. And the Vikings trailing 82-54. Robinson right of the lane. Got to be careful. Mitchell. 
snuck in from behind right there and able to poke that one away. Hornbuckle. Trade off with Mitchell, now Pearson. Checking in for Itunis. Moral of the story right now, get into the postseason. They know they're in. And do their damage. Get back to the NCAAs. Here's Gardner, TJ Gardner. Gives it off to Preston Bax the third. Shot up by Robinson, no good. Wallach, nope. And that would be Robinson comes down with it. Nelson, long three from the corner, tried to bank that one from a hard angle. Here's Hornbuckle. Hornbuckle will go in, and nice kiss off the glass. Hornbuckle now with five. 84-54, back to a 30-point lead. Here's Lay, going to try to go one-on-one -on -one with Zapinski. Won't win that battle. Wallach with the board. Here's Pearson. So we approach 840 left. Trellenberg kicks it out to Wallach. He's going to move in right of the lane. Shot up. Count it. Wallach now with nine. One point shy of double digits. 86-54. Blue Jays continue to pile it on. There's Gardner, five footer in the lane, no good. Gets his own board. And Robinson almost traveled. There's a long three. That one in and out, no good. And I believe this will be, well, I thought it was an offensive foul on Lay. Pinsky with his second, team sixth. Comes out Robinson, 5'10 freshman out of Orlando, Florida, went to Downey Christian High School. Nelson out to North Park. Robinson out to Lay. Here's TJ Gardner. Try to move this on Wallach. Sipinski return to center. Here's Trellenberg. Finds the trailing Pearson. Pearson now will choose some time off that clock. Finds Trellenberg back to Pearson. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Wallach. Picked up one-on-one -on -one by Gardner. Trellenberg, nice. Good rotation by the Blue Jays. Very patient. Got the right pass. And the right player. Trellenberg with five. There's a long three in the corner. That shot no good by Robinson. This one will go against the Blue Jays, too. Trellenberg, that's his second. It's going to put Lay to the free throw line. Lay on the night, six points. 0 for 1 from the charity stripe. Vikings shooting 9 of 12 for 75% from the free throw line. Kenton Lay, 6'3", senior out of Lake Stevens, Washington. Played at Highland High School and Porterville College. Shots no good. Here's Pearson. Gives it off to Pemberton. Well, we haven't had very many, dare I say it, and I'm not gonna. Not able to get to our reads tonight. Here's Hornbuckle, Pemberton. Hornbuckle, right of the lane, shot up, good. Hornbuckle now with seven. 90 to 54 with 644 left. Blue Jays looking to eclipse the century mark. 10 points left, long three, I thought maybe Preston backs the third. And move it in on Trellenberg. Shot up along the baseline, snuck that one in, that's good. He's got four, 90-56. Here's Pemberton. Oh, 
Bremerton with it. Warren Buckle, Trellenberg in the corner. Finds Zapinski with six seconds. Here's Pearson. 15 footer from the elbow, no good. Trellenberg gets it back and he's gonna be fouled. Dominic Trellenberg, 6'5", sophomore. Westchester. And there's the one thing that I did not mention that we're going to have. And we have a timeout on the floor. Elmhurst University Athletics would like to thank Under Armour and BSN Sports for being the official apparel partner of the Blue Jays. Serving the heart of the game since 1972, BSN Sports partners with schools to elevate the student experience in sport, spirit, and achievement. Under Armour aims to inspire you with performance solutions you never knew you needed and can't imagine living without. Under Armour has been proudly serving athletes since 1996. 90 to 56, 10 points shy of the century mark. Looking back at some of the scores this year. The only time I see triple digits was the first loss of the season out on the West Coast. No, I'm sorry. They did win that game. So this would be the second time if they score 100, they would eclipse the century mark. They won 102 to 92 at Whitman. Then two nights later, lost to Whitworth 71-74. A lot of high scoring games, but only one so far in triple digits. Here it's 90-56, 5-52 left to go here in this contest. That's been a good one so far. My director producer, Dennis Bergen, sitting to my right, keeping you centered and in the action here tonight. Here's Trellenberg. This one is good. He's three of three now. 19 of 22 is a team for the Blue Jays from the free throw line. Here's the second. 5.52 left. And both are good. Now I'm going to try to update you on scores. And just like I figured, close game. Carroll leading by two, 80 to 78 over Carthage. Two minutes left, shot up no good. And Hornbuckle with the board. That game's gonna come down to the wire. Here's Pemberton. Robert Roskowitz, 6'7", junior out of Addison, Illinois, getting ready to check in. Another basket good by the Blue Jays, 94-56. Trey Brooks, 6'5", graduate of El, El Raya, Ohio. Played at Open Door Christian School and Lake Erie College. Jellenberg with that last basket. He's now in double digits. Four Blue Jays in double digits. Itunas 14, Johnson 17, Pemberton 17, and Trellenberg with 11. Brooks, who just checked in, 6'5", graduate. Free throw is good. I think it's pronounced. El Ria, Ohio. Could be wrong. Here's Pemberton, 6'5 graduate. Big kid right there. Instant production as soon as he came in. Here's Pemberton. 4.54 left. Pemberton loses it, still loose in the lane. And coming up with it is going to be Humza Robinson. Dan Landingham, wild shot up, no good. Here's him with the board. Pemberton, finds Roskowitz. Here's Hornbuckle, Hornbuckle, turn around. A 10 footer, how about Trellenberg with the board? Roskowitz in, and he's gonna be guilty of a travel. Trellenberg and Roskowitz, those two together. 
are forced down low. Moskowitz. 6-7. Schellenberg, 6-5. 94-57. 4 10 left. Elias Morris in for the Vikings. High screen set by Phil Holmes Jr. Shot from the elbow is good by Robinson. Comes a Robinson, 5'10 freshman, as I mentioned about Orlando. Full court press, that one. Oskowitz with the foul, and Steven Zesegir, six foot senior from Akron, Ohio, will go to the line. That's only his first, but team's ninth. Vikings looking to go into the double bonus. One more foul committed by the Blue Jays. Shot up no good. Trellenberg with the board, finds Wallach. I would suspect that the starters probably have seen their last action, 331. Roskowitz, Wallach, back over the corner. Trellenberg for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. No Blue Jays near that rebound. DJ Wallace with the board for the Vikings. He'll post up for a three. That one, no good. Roskowitz gets a hand on it. Now Wallach. 94-59. Here's Mitchell. Mitchell gives it up for Hornbuckle. Hornbuckle, good night with seven. Here's Wallach. Wallach with nine, looking for double digits, and he's got it. He's got 11. Five Blue Jays. Mitchell with the steal. Hornbuckle, he's going to try a three. That one no good. And now North Park coming out with it. Zessagir. 96-59, 2.30 left. Comes a Robinson with the first step, quick move, no good. Drellenberg with the board. And here's Mitchell, 2.20 left. Timeout, it looks like they're just going to take what they call, well, let's see, did they call it first of all? It looks like it's just going to be a, one of those quick timeouts just to catch a quick breather. Not really considered much of a timeout here. Elmhurst University Athletics is happy to provide live stats at today's game. Visit the basketball schedule page on your program, wherever you're watching at home. Just head over to ElmhurstBlueJays.com. Check out all the updates. If you're watching the video, the score on the bottom. Provided by Suncom.tv. Dennis Bergen doing a great job, as he always does. Love working with these guys. Total professionals. Do a great job. Vikings trying to stop the Blue Jays. E.J. Marshall. Out of Downers Grove, Illinois, Proviso East. In for the Blue Jays. Well, there's a couple extra steps, no call. Kicks it out in the corner. Here's Brooks. Brooks going to move it in, kick it out. Robinson for a long three. That's no good. Crashing the boards, and we had bodies flying everywhere. The buck 46. Looks like the Vikings going to go to the free throw line. Oskowitz is his second, team's 10th, so Vikings in the double bonus. Ninety-six fifty-nine. What a show here tonight. by the Blue Jays. Fire, fire, fire. 
DJ Marshall. John Witcher out there also. Sebastian Blahoot. Long three in the corner. That one no good by Witcher, the 6'4 sophomore out of Hudson, Wisconsin. Shot up and good by Brooks. 96-62, minute 10 left. And the Vikings will get the ball. Twelve seconds left at Carroll. Carroll up 86-83. Robinson with the shot and one coming up. 64 seconds left in this game. I tell you, Robinson playing some big minutes. Doesn't have a lot of points, but he has been big out there for the Vikings here tonight. And one is good. Here's Marshall. Kicks it out, Caleb Leslie. Now Blahoot. 62 sophomore out of Wooddale, Illinois. 46 seconds left. Roskowitz. Thought maybe he would try a three. Here's Blahoot. Zero on zero, shot up, no good. Boarded down by E.J. Marshall. Marshall, shot up, no good. Tried to crawl that one over the rim. Shot clock is off. That's Brooks. 15 left. Here's Robinson. Nice opposite hand switch, and he's going to go to the free throw line again. Well, with the win tonight, the Blue Jays move back into second as they have the looks like the tiebreaker against Carthage. So Carthage gonna lose at Carroll tonight. That's good. Robinson makes the first. I'd like to get you that Illinois Wesleyan score, but don't think that's gonna happen. Robinson misses. Lahoot with the board. Right now, Milliken with a comfortable lead. 53 45, and Illinois Wesleyan is going to lose. But here, the Elmhurst Blue Jays will win 96 66. It'll move to 17 and 4 overall, more importantly, 9 and 3 in the CCIW. They'll be back at it on the road against North Central at Illinois Wesleyan. Back here against Wheaton on the 10th at Carroll on the 14th. For everybody here at RA Fadden Hall, I'm Bill Downing. Thanks to Dennis Bergen with Suncom.tv and everybody in attendance watching around tonight. Have yourself a good night. Blue Jays win 96-66. Good night.